fireworks are the perfect way to celebrate pretty much anything, right? Birthdays, bonfire night, new year. You can't go wrong with a few ooh and ah and some massive bangs in the sky and those are stunning colours and shapes. My favourites are the ones that burst with one colour and then burst again with another colour and go crackle. Yes. It's important though to remember that fireworks can be really, really dangerous. So you should always leave them to adults and professionals. And also keeping well back from a display won't just keep you safe, it'll mean you can see them more clearly. But did you know that fireworks have been around for more than a thousand years? They were invented in China in the ninth century and firework making was one of the most respected jobs around. Look after the factory whilst I'm away. No problem, I will. Do, 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 do. Oh, 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 I fell asleep. What time is it? Okay. Do, do, do. Ah. Hmm. Today, fireworks are so popular that there are even firework competitions held all over the world. So how do they actually work? Well, most of the big fountains of colour you see at a fireworks display come from one of these. It's called a shell, and it's launched from a tube like this, a mortar. But remember that they can be really dangerous, so if you find one, never touch it. Leave that to the professionals. This shell is empty but normally it would have everything inside that we need to make a bang high up in the air, followed by a flowery explosion of colour and cracks and whistles. And this is what is inside that shell. It might look complicated, but every single thing plays a role in making the firework look and sound awesome. And it's down to some equally awesome chemistry. First up, we've got this part at the bottom. It's called the lift charge and it's made of gunpowder. Gunpowder is flammable, which means that when it comes into contact with enough heat, a chemical reaction called combustion takes place, which you might know of as burning. For combustion to happen, you need three things, fuel, oxygen and heat. The chemicals in the gunpowder provide the fuel and the oxygen, and then the flame provides the heat. Have all three in the right combinations and you get combustion. That means producing a lot of gas, and then you've got that gas to thank for your whole firework display. The trick is to seal your gunpowder inside a container. As it burns, more and more gas is produced. The pressure increases inside the tube and the container breaks, releasing all that gas at once really, really fast in an explosion. When the fuse is lit, the flame travels all the way down to the gunpowder in the lift charge. That explodes, all of that gas produced pushes against the bottom of the mortar and the rest of the shell is pushed up into the air at up to 200 miles an hour. As the firework is zooming up in the air, there's actually another fuse slowly burning, carrying the flame up and up and up into the middle of the shell here to the burst charge. When it's high in the sky, that burst charge is ignited. It contains gunpowder plus a different chemical mix called flash powder, which combusts even faster, making an even bigger explosion and a really loud bang. 
have you noticed how sometimes they are so loud they can make your chest shake? When the burst charge explodes inside our firework, it sends everything else inside the shell out into the sky. That's where these little things come in. They're called stars. And when they're lit by the burst charge explosion, they leave brightly coloured streaks across the sky and can give us the brilliant crackles and whistles that you sometimes get too. Inside each star is a mix of chemicals that provides the fuel and the oxygen you need for them to burn, plus a particular metal. Each metal gives a different colour flame, like strontium, which used to be used in old TVs. But when strontium is burned in a firework, it makes a red flame. Or you can use copper, the pipes that carry water and the wires that carry electricity through your house are probably made of copper. But when copper is burned in a firework, it makes a blue flame. Or a star might contain barium. Hey, uh, here's a joke. What do you do when a chemist dies? You bury him. Who doesn't love chemistry jokes? Just me? Barium is a metal that helps doctors x-ray your intestines. But when barium is burned in a firework, it makes a green flame. And if a firework contains a mix of different metals, you'll get a mix of different colours. You can even make shapes by arranging the stars carefully inside the shell, just like this smiley face. How cool is that? And where was the best firework display that you've ever seen? Tell us in the comments below. Now, you might be worried about how safe it is to burn all those chemicals up in the air. And you'd be right. While they won't harm you while you're watching, too much burning can lead to air pollution and climate change. For that reason, we don't set fireworks off all the time. And some firework displays are specifically designed to be carbon neutral. But did you know that the biggest ever firework weighed more than 2,300 pounds? That's about the weight of two grizzly bears. It travelled more than a kilometre up into the air and it exploded in a huge fountain of red sparks. I would have loved to have seen that. <laughs> Welcome to my evil laboratory. <laughs> Ego, pour the gunpowder into the rocket. Yes, Paris. Eureka! It is now time to fire the rocket. <laughs> oh, I must have miscalculated. Nice grizzly bears. <laughs> So a firework is made up of some carefully chosen chemicals that undergo combustion when they're ignited. Gunpowder produces a lot of gas that lifts the firework off the ground. There's some flash powder inside to produce a big loud bang and a, a huge aerial explosion. And metal in the stars give us the wonderful colours and shapes. So when you next see a green firework, instead of saying ooh or ah, maybe shout barium! And your friends might look at you a little bit strangely, but then you can tell them a cool chemistry joke. If you can't helium or curium, then you'll have to bury them. Still nothing. Nothing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want more awesome Explained with Lego videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. And in the comments, let us know what question you'd like us to answer next. Barium, it's an element. <laughs>